The moment before her death, a later version of the doctor had the Time Lords use an extraction chamber to freeze Clara in the moments between one heartbeat and another before her death and take her to Gallifrey. The eleventh general, believing Clara was there to help locate the hybrid, tried to tell her that she was not really alive and would have to be returned to her own time to die after they were done with her help, but the doctor overpowered the general and grabbed his gun. After the general refused to let them go, the doctor made sure he could regenerate and then shot him, taking a neural block calibrated for humans with him as he fled with Clara. The two fled into the cloisters and the doctor informed Clara of his time in his confession dial and his history with the cloisters. Clara was horrified to realize it had been a very long time for the doctor since she died and he had changed. Clara confronted the twelfth general and Ohila and demanded to know how long the doctor had been in the confession dial, learning it was four and a half billion years. She was struck speechless when she realized the depth of his caring for her. At that moment, Clara realized that she and the doctor should say certain things to each other. After whispering a message to him, Clara turned to the general and Ohila. She refused to reveal what she had told the doctor, except to indicate that she was a distraction so the doctor could escape and steal another TARDIS. The doctor materialized a new TARDIS around Clara and the doctor and Clara fled Gallifrey. Believing that Clara's heart would restart once they were away from Gallifrey, the doctor was stunned to realize it hadn't. Desperate, he took her to the last five minutes of the universe, believing her heart would restart. It did not and Clara became concerned when the doctor shouted at her in frustration. When the doctor left the TARDIS to talk to Ashilder, Clara used the doctor's sonic sunglasses to activate the TARDIS scanner and watched as the doctor and Ashilder discussed the hybrid and Ashilder's theory that it was the doctor and Clara together since they would do anything, including fracture time to save each other. Hearing that the doctor planned to wipe her memory of him, Clara reversed the polarity of the neural block using the glasses. When the doctor returned, she challenged the doctor over his plans, demanding to be allowed to keep her memories and informing him of her sabotage. The doctor relented, but indicated that their relationship had become too dangerous. The doctor decided it was for the best that they were separated. Uncertain as to whether she had actually been able to reverse the polarity of the device, Clara and the doctor agreed to push the button together and let fate decide. The doctor and Clara activated the neural block and the doctor's memory of Clara was erased. Before passing out, the doctor gave Clara several pieces of advice as to how to be her own doctor. Clara flew the TARDIS to Nevada where she dropped the doctor off and told a man to look out for him. She then subsequently traveled to London and used the TARDIS to retrieve the doctor's TARDIS. Soon, Clara and Ashilder piloted their TARDIS to Nevada and used its chameleon circuit to have it take on the form of an American roadside diner. Somehow, the doctor found himself at the diner. Clara, dressed as a waitress, listened to the doctor's story of what happened to her and how he couldn't remember much beyond her name and bits of their adventures together. Though the doctor believed he would recognize her if he met her, he didn't and Clara was devastated. During his visit, the doctor played a romantic melody. Hearing him play this tune, and realizing she had lost the doctor, Clara suggested that perhaps memories become songs when they are forgotten. With the doctor turned away and distracted by his playing, Clara opened a door at the rear of the diner, and dematerialized around the doctor, leaving him with his own TARDIS next to him and a message on his chalkboard inside stating, Run you clever boy and be a doctor. Flying off, Ashilder informed Clara that their chameleon circuit was stuck and their TARDIS was stuck in the form of an American diner. Clara's heart hadn't restarted and she realized that her death was a fixed point in time and she had to die. However, Clara noted that she was now effectively immortal so she had some wiggle room. Clara decided to return to Gallifrey to have the Time Lords return her to her death, but to go there, the long way around, going on more adventures with Ashilder. Me and Clara were traveling in their TARDIS when Clara was compelled to return to Nevada in temporally abnormal circumstances and met the Twelfth Doctor during his travels with Bill Potts. After seeing a younger version of herself, also brought here by the Temporal Anomalies, destroy a Dalek in a way which the doctor found disturbing. The immortal Clara Riley stated that she had done much worse since, but the doctor urged her not to elaborate. After joining the doctor on an expedition to the Underhenge, Clara parted ways with him again and returned to the diner TARDIS. Standing in the diner room, the two women agreed to try and disentangle themselves from the doctor's timeline and, to do so, set a course for the most boring place me knew, and thus the least likely to be visited by the doctor.
the Minyoung ship. Game. Lost in time. After Willa Twiston was saved from death by the 13th Doctor, Willa joined Clara and me on their travels. In his book concerning the saving of Gallifrey at the end of the last Great Time War, the curator, an aged incarnation of the Doctor from the distant future, related that Clara Oswald, who therefore, knew him of old, often popped round for tea. Out of courtesy for Clara, the curator pretended not to know who Clara really was and how he knew her. While reflecting on whether the Tenth Doctor had really married Elizabeth I, the competing hypothesis being that Elizabeth had instead tricked him into a false ceremony to tether him to her, the curator asked Clara if she thought the Doctor could have been so easily bamboozled. Clara answered that she agreed it sounded far-fetched, but knew from personal experience that Elizabeth was a fantastic kisser.